Are there any other additional agenda re items that need to be added to the current agenda? No, from the right, anything to the left? Anything? All right. I, th I think uh, Brenda has requested to give a project update. Yeah, so right. we can put that on, under project teams number B, as in boy, okay. the Holly, the kiln walk. All right. So, Brenda, project update. Um, all right. If you've had time to read the minutes from the last meeting, which was in November, it was a, we didn't have one in December. So if you've had time, I'm um, looking for an approval of those amendments. All right. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. We'll move forward. Thank you. All right, we will go to item number two, which is the lodging tax update. And I think that's you, Julie. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, our numbers came in for October at $268,125, which was a 52% increase over last October. The October before that, we showed a 6% increase. Year before that, a 17%, and year before that, it was 46% increase. So, if we look back to 14-15, we brought in $97,000 in October. In this October, 18-19, we brought in $268,000. We're doing really well. I think those are phenomenal numbers, and I think we would all agree with that. I'm very pleased. Thank you for mm -hmm. you and your team. Um, you and know that's it, everybody, and it takes a team to create it, numbers like that. So I don't want to single anyone out. I, I applaud this board here and the marketing and everything, be it local and be it um, far marketing, our marketing reach team for Paradise. So thank you, good numbers. Um, okay, so if you're gonna put Brenda's update under number two, you said? Her under number three, oh, number three. B. Oh, okay, B, I understand what you mean, I said two. All right, so if we go to number three, which we are talking about our projects, then we're looking at the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge. You have the floor, thank you. Just make sure that mic's on. How about now? Very good, good morning, I'm Bill Anderson. Uh, just graduated as president and chairman of the board of the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge after my three and a half year term. Good. Mitch Robbins is now the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge's president and Carol Anderson is our executive director. For those of you who don't know me, and there are a couple, but it's good to see a bunch of friendly faces, uh, Happy New Year. Let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a 24-year-plus retired United States Air Force Colonel from uh, United States uh, SOCOM and Air Force Special Operations. Spent uh, 24 years, roughly, at Hurlburt Field, first being assigned here in 1993, so I'm a longtime local resident at Navarre. Had the honor of serving uh, in AFSOC with Commissioner Peach and uh, retired in 2013 after uh, multiple battlefield de uh, deployments, the last of which I was in a helicopter crash, so it kind of took me out of the fight. So you won't see me sitting a lot in our meetings as we get together. I uh, almost always stand. So we're here to talk today about the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge building project in Navarre, Florida. That's been uh, ongoing since 2017. I don't know if you happen to have the copies of the slides that I forwarded or the uh, project narrative. And I realize this was uh, Excuse with me. the holiday. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jesse, can you, do you want him to bring up the PowerPoint or the? That would be fantastic. He's going to bring available, it up. It might help everybody yep. so that we're all talking off the same sheet of music, that's for sure. Do you have, no, it's, it's a backup document on the agenda. He's Thank gonna, you so much, He's going to look while you're talking. I wasn't sure to bring copies to distribute or not. Uh, I always hate wasting the trees, but it looks like in this case I should have done so, so I apologize for not doing so. If you don't mind, I will talk through some of the background as we're waiting for those slides. This, uh, how familiar are you all with what we're doing up there 
and Navarre. Are you familiar with the project? I know it's got an extensive press. It's been ongoing since 2017, as you know. It uh, began with Storminized donation of the 2.3 acres of our property there in Holly, Navarre. We're longtime uh, refuge volunteers, and we certainly saw the critical need to get the refuge out of its current location, which is in the old fire station on Okaloosa Island. So it's the old fire station for a reason. I think I was told this is 1950s era construction. The place is literally falling down around our ears. We've been very thankful to Okaloosa County for making that available to us the past, I think it's 13 years now, if my math's correct. But the fire station has moved on for a reason. They uh, built themselves a new facility, have been that in that for a number of years now. And I'm told that uh, the existing facility we're in, the old fire station, uh, the fire department has put in a grant to tear down uh, that facility and build themselves a fire training facility in its footprint. So uh, in addition to the fact that we think we're facing black mold problems, uh, the building's falling down around our ears, it's an unhealthy environment for both our, our workers, our volunteers, and our animals. Now there's a sense of urgency to get moved because the facility is going away. So uh, that's certainly given us even more impetus to uh, get moved and operational here in Santa Rosa than we already had. But we already had plenty. Look, Santa Rosa, we've been supporting uh, this county uh, since our inception in 1994. As you all might know, I think it might be most informative if we can go to the slides, if those are available. The 20-page uh, Word document, I think uh, that's probably left for y'all's own devices to read at your convenience, but if the slides are available, that might, that might be uh, a bit more helpful. So as I was saying, we've been supporting Santa Rosa County since uh, 1994. Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge is the oldest and largest rehabilitator in Northwest Florida. Oh, look at this. This is fantastic. And I am on, I'm talking on slide two right now. There you go, 22. Thank you. So we're all uh, on the same sheet of music now. To, uh, we handle that five county area here of Northwest uh, Gulf Coast. We truly are a regional uh, part of our communities uh, and the services we provide to those five Gulf Coast counties. We treat between 1,500 and 2,500 sick and injured orphaned or orphaned animals annually. Our end of year figures uh, here that I compiled at the end of 2018, 1,770 animals of 152 different species. Uh, that includes, as the slide says, everything from bald eagles to owls, dolphins. I'm not sure that we had a manatee this year or not, but that's not unusual. And the reason it's not unusual is we're the federally recognized marine mammal stranding response team for that five county uh, northwest Florida area so that's a big deal and when you compile the uh, breadth of the mission we have with the area we cover uh, being part of that marine mammal stranding federally recognized team and doing it with the uh, small amount of employees we do we're the only wildlife refuge in the United States to do all those things and oh by the way I forgot to mention we ed educate about 5,000 school kids a year everything from uh, pre-k up to postgraduate college interns that uh, come from across the nation to uh, learn wildlife rehabilitation from the refuge so if we can go to the next slide that's kind of the summary of what i just talked to you about our uh, general contractor i'm sorry back up uh, one if you would our general contractor ctg improvements out of milton He's doing the project at his cost as his philanthropic contribution. Uh, Blackshear Metals, we went with uh, prefabricated, pre-engineered metal buildings. It was the most cost effective. Uh, that contractor just bought Navarre CrossFit. Many of you all, all are familiar with that facility in Navarre. So we have two very credible contractors uh, working our project for us. You can see the timeline. Thank you very much. Is it just the forward button? Thank you. You can see the timeline on our development uh, sequence. Like I say, this started in 2017. That A slight amendment to that last bullet. Site prep is complete. Uh, all the permits have been uh, issued. The development order is issued. We have one slab poured. We were trying to 
pour the second one for the Education Center on the 26th of December. It got rained out. We got rained out again uh, Wednesday. So now we are pouring Saturday, at which point we will have the foundations of both the uh, Visitor Education Center and the Medical Rehabilitation Center complete and those metal buildings that have been on site, the steel for which since uh, 17 July will finally be going up. That is the site plan for those of you who haven't been out there yet and I'd be happy to show you around at your convenience. So the Education and Visitor Center will be at the front of the property looking towards the top of the slide that is Highway 87 which the property directly abuts and then the Medical Rehabilitation Center is in the back of the property. Appropriately so, since that won't be a facility that's open to the public, we're prohibited from having that open to the public, so the critters that we're rehabilitating don't imprint on humans and thus become nuisance critters when we return them to the wild, which is always our end goal. So getting to the, uh, the meat if the, of the briefing, if you will, Here's our total building construction costs. The 119,950 is what uh, we've already paid, which leaves us 490,000 in outstanding construction costs. We've received $135,000 in donations on top of that to include most recently the Impact 100 grant for $100,300 for the Impact 100 uh, Pensacola Bay Area ladies here in this past October which leaves $354,808 in unfunded building costs. And then in addition to that, we have $116,750 in unfunded habitat costs. These are both for rehabilitating animals or animal ambassadors, which are uh, critters that while viable and that we've been able to save due to the extent of their injuries would be unable to hunt for themselves, protect themselves, etc in the wild so they will be uh, lifelong residents and uh, guests at our refuge. That leaves total construction costs outstanding of $471,558 for us to complete construction, get to move to Navarre and Santa Rosa County and be fully operational. You can see and as I tried to highlight we've already raised significant uh, percentages of those funds ourselves so we've been very busy since this project inception as a board trying to support ourselves now we're to the point where frankly uh, we need some help or there's going to be some construction delays and I don't think anybody wants that from what I've seen uh, the support we've been receiving from uh, Santa Rosa and of our citizens let me back up just a little uh, we were asked to take over a zoo in 2013. It was formerly known as the Sasquatch Zoo, seven miles to the east of Crestview. We rehabilitated both those uh, hundred and something exotic animals. It was the largest rescue in Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge history. And we re rehabilitated all the facilities at that zoo. Thousands of volunteer hours, hundreds of thousands of dollars invested. And uh, we ran that zoo quite successfully. It was the number one attraction on uh, TripAdvisor and Crestview the entire time we owned it. Uh, the point being we generated $120,591 in revenues our last total year that we owned that facility, which was 2016. We sold the zoo in 2017 to appropriately return to our primary mission of wildlife rehabilitation and education. Uh, and we were happy to do so to a man and his family who's very passionate about the zoo business and has tremendous experience in doing so. Point being, we're used to running a public facility. Uh, we're used to generating the revenues that uh, it takes, the maintenance, the overhead, the upkeep, the staffing, et cetera, that it takes to run an open to the public facility involving animals. And we've done so successfully, as I hope this uh, slide highlights to you. So the immediate impact of us moving to Santa Rosa County, as uh, we talked about a bit more detail on the previous slide, 14,041 annual paying visitors, 2016 is what uh, we had up at the zoo, generating that $120,000 in revenue. When we moved to Santa Rosa County, 
uh, with that move transfers two hundred seven thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars which is our annual uh, refuge budget that includes the hundred twenty three thousand and change of payroll for two full-time and four part-time employees those transfer immediately we also expect two additional full-time employees in May uh, I'm a bit hesitant to provide more details because that's grant based and you never want to uh, count your chickens before they're hatched with grants for sure but it looks very very promising and that would provide us with a full-time veterinarian and full-time marine mammal stranding coordinator to fulfill those responsibilities to the federal government that I talked about that the refuge has that would bring our total uh, impact immediately once those two positions came on board of three hundred and eighteen thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars annually in addition to that here's the kind of support we've been getting from our contractors our volunteers in the uh, community both commercial uh, and private $210,000 appraisal or excuse me donation of the land which is the largest in refuge history in addition to that our contractors as I stated have uh, made tremendous contributions to this project uh, some of them doing it at their own cost as I talked about which is pretty remarkable when you consider historic levels of growth and construction in Santa Rosa County that they're willing to step up to the plate and take this project on at cost when they could be out there uh, certainly jobbing at the uh, regular wage so we're very appreciative of that those total to six hundred and eighty four thousand uh, dollars in in-kind donations in addition to that our volunteer contributions I would like to update this slide for you to end of year figures at the conclusion of 2018 we had eighteen thousand four hundred and twenty six board of directors intern and refuge volunteer hours if you use the uh, nationally accepted wage rate for volunteer hours of 2469 that totals five hundred and twenty four thousand dollars in in-kind volunteer services provided to our organization by our dedica dedicated citizenry that volunteers with the refuge across our five counties you can see our education contact hours I'm sorry I didn't update these but uh, these are towards the middle of December 2,676 in 16 area schools with total education contacts of almost 5,000 which is about our historic annual average in addition our Facebook and social media contacts have increased from 16,500 to 20,650 in this one year period uh, and actually I should say nine months it's since uh, our new executive director took over Carol is relatively new to the job so in that uh, nine month period of time that's a 24 percent increase in our social media presence as well so she's doing great work so here's what I'm uh, here to uh, talk with you all about in detail uh, we're requesting funding of four hundred seventy one thousand five hundred eighty eight dollars for outstanding construction costs to get ECWR moved to Santa Rosa County as quickly as possible and without construction stoppages and we're asking this because we do believe that we have not just the potential but we we frankly already are a regional draw and contributor uh, to this five county uh, environment that we operate within support and the communities and wildlife we support therein we think that right now our facilities are far and away our biggest uh, limiting factor in our becoming a regional draw here in Santa Rosa County and the reason I say that is because with the sale of the zoo we no longer have an open to the public facility the fire station that we currently operate under uh, in in Okaloosa County is not open to the public because it is our primary rehabilitation facility as I explained we can't have it open to the public we're prohibited from doing so so we basically at this point have no place where the public can come and engage with us see our activities on a daily basis see the great work we're doing uh, partake in our educational programs unless we go to schools or go to events in other words we're playing away games at all times 
uh, finishing this campus will give us that dedicated educational facility and open to the public campus that ECWR has always desired and frankly has earned over its 25 year history. So we've raised 498,000 or 61% of the total project costs of $819,058. Another $1,209,000 in in-kind donation and that uh, 1.2 million figure is the update to include the numbers I just shared with you reflecting the end of 2018 figures. So we've taken this project for self-funding and we are going to continue to do so. We have a very dedicated professional board who's aggressively pursuing funding from all angles so that we can continue to support ourselves in the manner we've done so to this point. But right now we need your help to finish construction without delays due to those funding shortfalls I shared with you of the 471. We're proven, we have been proven, we've been around for 25 years, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we've supported these five Gulf Coast counties for the entirety of our existence and will continue to do so. Santa Rosa County is right here in the heart of our envelope and it's obvious to us that uh, this county wants us here and we certainly want to be here. So we need your help to permanently re relocate to Santa Rosa and take the next step in our and Santa Rosa County's development uh, as a regional tourist draw that I believe the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge has the potential to become and frankly is already a regional contributor in con conservation education and wildlife rehabilitation. So with that, I would like to take any questions you might have. And I appreciate your time and attention. All right, we'll open it up to the group. Yes, ma'am. We are. Uh, we do want it, uh, the entire campus with the exception of the back half. I don't know remember if you remember the slide depiction, but to the north is Highway 87, the Education Center is next, and then the uh, Medical Rehabilitation Center is in the back of the property. So the back of the property with the Medical Rehabilitation Center where, is where our rehabilitation habitats will be, one of which y'all were kind enough to uh, support our uh, raccoon uh, habitat uh, because that's frankly the most uh, plentiful animal we get, that and the eastern gray squirrels, which uh, you also contributed towards uh, those, that project. So those rehabilitation habitats will be at the very back of the property, separated from the public. Our plan is to have one-way glass in the nursery, the aviary, I think that's it. Oh, in the, in the ward room up front so that visitors can see in, but the critters can't see them, which uh, should allow us to stay within the guidance given to us by a federal and state uh, regulators, but also allow the public to see what's going on, at least partially, in the Medical Rehabilitation Center. We'll also have feeds from those various areas piped into the Education and Visitor Outreach Center. The point being, with the exception of the Medical Rehabilitation Center and those rehabilitation habitats at the very south end of the property, all the rest of the campus will be open to the general public. So yes, we're going to have animal habitats throughout uh, the, the campus and the Visitor Education Center is uh, directly dedicated to uh, the guests who come visit us. Does that answer your question, ma'am? You're welcome. I have a question. So it seems that $1.7 million has been raised and donated, and that's what you have based on these numbers here. Uh, well, because you said the other one was... A lot of it's in-kind donations, just to be clear. Yeah. But 1.7, be it whatever. How much more do you think is needed for this project? I know exactly. That's the 471. And then it's completely done forever, done and done, done. Yes, ma'am. That builds out all our habitats and it completes construction of our two buildings. We believe, and that's what the revenue figures uh, share that I tried to show uh, to you, to the zoo we ran in Crestview. Look, that was in the middle of nowhere, to be mm -hmm. kind of bluntly. And uh, we generated those kind of revenues and that kind of visitor uh, stream. 
We think being centrally located on Highway 87, our prime growth corridor into Navarre through Santa Rosa County to Navarre Beach and eastward, uh, that we're going to match those numbers if not exceed them. We're a very uh, attractive draw. You know, currently the facility we're in, we're not open to the public and daily. Uh, Stormy Fields questions, hey, can we get a tour? Uh, can we come visit? We want to see your operations, et cetera. So, yeah, that that's going to do it for us. Now, long. No, where, I was going to ask, where else have you gone to get this kind of money re other than the TDC? I think you'll see in uh, quite uh, maybe too much detail for you. I, I, try I and, tried uh, to read it, and then I stopped. Yes, ma'am. I, I tried to give you more information than less. I hope I didn't overwhelm you all, but I tried to lay out where all we have uh, been uh, raising money and will continue to do so. Uh, three major sources, as you uh, going to be no surprise to you, right? Every nonprofit on earth pretty much goes to these three same sources, grants, corporate sponsors, and private donations. We've been successful in all three realms. I think uh, those are three good ones that you need to keep moving forward with. Yes, ma'am. You know. Absolutely true. We'll see about this. Any, uh, anybody else have anything to add? I would love to hear the commissioners view on this and funding and and all of that thank you uh bill good to yes, see sir. you again good to um see you. i have toured the site with uh mr anderson and um like i tell you it's it's going to be a big attraction in my opinion um with highway 87 opening up I, i've said this for quite a while i think that corridor between the beach in the woodlands up north is, is uh, ripe for opportunity and it, and it supports an ecotourism mantra that we kind of have going all along that way from beaches to woodlands um you know wildlife is a is a big big draw in my opinion so i'm excited that this operations here in santa rosa county i, I applaud those efforts and uh thank you you know i think it'll only only get better you know from sea turtles and marine map uh, science stations up through um, this and then we have the kiln on 87 and then we have the black water and then we go further up north you know to the cold water creek in that area so um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for this county and uh, you know I'm supportive of his efforts and I would hope the TDC could uh, somehow come to an agreement to support a, a portion of this or all this uh, this is my first meeting with the TDC I'm excited about it but I do believe it's it's going to be a good draw I think the Gulf Breeze Zoo draws a lot of folks um, this will draw even more folks I think because this is actual wildlife that's being rehabilitated and returned I would I would, ag I would agree with all that I w the only thing I would add is I think your timing is off our budget is done you know for this year um, we would have to pull monies out of reserves, which we don't like to do and typically don't do and don't have enough for that. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I think it needs to be revisited once the new um, budget comes out, which is October. We need to revisit this. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I hear and understand what you're saying, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're here under the direction of the county commissioners. As you know, we invested about seven and a half months of our time uh, based upon requests and, uh, frankly, inputs from, I believe, this commission that thought co-location of the Panhandle Butterfly House and the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge on our property would be a good idea. Uh, that didn't come to fruition. Yeah. So it didn't just throw off your timelines. It certainly threw off our timelines as well. I mean, uh, from where I stand, uh, in retrospect, I think that was frankly wasted time. Do I think that was a good idea? Yes, I do. I thought it was a good idea then. Whoever, whichever one of y'all came up with that, I, th I thought it made tremendous sense. I think it makes tremendous sense now for whatever reasons, and it's their choice as well as it was ours. They decided to move a different direction, but make no mistake, that cost Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge seven and a half months of time that we didn't have because we are already in the thick of this project. So uh, your point is very well taken. I, I think we're both facing that same reality right now, right? That seven and a half months cost us dearly in so many ways and uh, we can't get it back. So that's why I think the commissioners were gracious enough to uh, allow me to come speak with y'all in an out of cycle type request. 
I don't know if they have some uh, some creative thoughts that perhaps they're going to talk with you all about. It. Again, it's uh, out of cycle in so many ways, right? Everybody's just coming back from the holidays, and uh, you all probably haven't got a chance to talk yet. One uh, point I wanted to make, and this is kind of the conclusion of where we're headed, and uh, this is where I was going. I didn't want to interrupt you, though. You know, we see our logical next step as being... Uh, marine mammal rehabilitation as well as just stranding response which we uh, currently do right that is a huge level of effort and we're talking uh, multi-million dollar type of uh, investments and support and engagement by the federal government etc so that's not going to happen overnight but it's the logical next step I mean, right now, when we uh, respond to a stranding, we have to transport those uh, animals to either Panama City or Dauphin Island, Alabama, for the closest uh, authorized response and treatment centers, if you will. It's the natural progression of Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge for us to become that uh, rehabilitator of choice, as we are, are right now, as the responder of choice. Uh, for those federal agencies that oversee our nation's most threatened and endangered creatures. creatures, We will work towards that end. That seems very complementary to me to the efforts of uh, the Navarre Beach Marine Science Center, what they're doing on the education side of the house, we uh, plan on doing on the rehabilitation side of the house. So as we talk to regional draws, I mean, frankly, I don't think that combination you could get much stronger from the wildlife rehabilitation, conservation, education, and then rehabilitation perspective when you put those all together. That was a lot. That's um, a mouthful to say, isn't that it? Was a, that was a <laughs> lot to hear. Yeah, you did well. <laughs> How'd I do? <laughs> <laughs> um, through this fiscal year, it seems our focus as a board has been the beach. There's a lot of things we need to do tourist-wise to get our beaches up to par. Just par, not um, where we need for them to be or where we would like for them to be, just up to par. And just sheer budgetary, I'm pretty fiscally responsible at my own home, and I am with this board's money, and to me, it's just outside of, of what we do. And that's just my opinion, and I will open it up to anyone else um, if there's a recommendation or any suggestions or anything or conversation, I mean. I'd like to let, give an update probably at this point with the TDC board sure. needs. To thank, first of all, thank you thank for, you for uh, coming today. Thank you for being a good partner the last yeah. few months going through this with the county. We appreciate that. Um, thank you. That means a lot. The current TDC balance is... Um, back out the $750,000 that we, we voted to remain in there and the commission voted as well, we have $1.5 million available. Okay, that's not a lot of money. That's what we have though, okay? Uh, that's our reserve account. Our current budget this year, as you guys know, is already accounted for, as well as the reserve for contingency line item that you guys voted. $100,000 for the beach shower stations and upgrades and another $100,000 to upgrade the islands on Gulf Boulevard. So our, our actual budget, operating budget that we're working off of is promised, allocated, spent. So that leaves us what the chairman uh, just referred to as our reserve account, what's left. And like I said, after you back out that $750,000, it leaves us with a little over $1.5 million. And so, I would be remiss if I didn't remind everybody that what is coming down the pipeline for us in the next year to two years is going to be more asks than we have money for. Brenda's sitting out there right now. She's one of them. I mean, it's coming down the pipeline. We're going to have requests for other infrastructure projects. We need to keep that in mind as we're making these decisions today, too, you know. If we do partially fund this, we need, we're setting a precedence. Whatever we do today, we're setting a precedence with others coming down the pipeline, meaning the Kiln Walk, who we gave money to to get construction plans and told them to come back later, um, whether it be that, whether it be down the line, the Discovery Center, uh, the Butterfly House, I totally foresee them coming possibly to us, maybe. I don't know if they will or not, but 
it's a great possibility. It is a good uh, yeah, they're it's so. In other words, you have 1.5 million dollars, and these requests that are coming down the pipeline in the next couple of years will total far beyond that. So, whatever you guys think about today and make your decision today it needs to be based on knowing that we have got that much money. Here's what's coming. And I'll let you guys think about it a little bit more. Good, good I am not again. I am. I uh, think you have a great organization. I don't. I just don't know that the TDC can shoulder your full ask today. I don't know that we can shoulder that full. I mean, we obviously we can on paper. We can, but then that's going to cut out the next couple. You know what I mean? And then it's going to deplete our reserves too, down to and that we do not want. Right. Our reserves. So I, I think that we could possibly shoulder some of your ask, but I don't think all of your ask. That's just my opinion as your director. I would I would agree with that and the precedence that it does have because we'll have others coming that I mean that could be all that we do is just fund and do things like that and not be responsible for other things I mean there's only so much money okay I, I completely understand that point I also hope that you understand the point but that we are a federally sanctioned and recognized regional conservation educator and wildlife rehabilitator now and we have been for 25 years and I hope I've also made the point that we have been busy funding ourselves unlike some other organizations we aren't just out there with our hand up uh, asking for county money we have done everything we can to support ourselves frankly I didn't ever want to be here coming to talk to you saying we needed help I mean, I am in personally for $210,000 towards this project, along with my wife. So uh, this is not something I take lightly. It's not something appropriately that you should take lightly. But this isn't some fly-by-night organization that doesn't have a proven record of A, public service, B, regional contribution, and C, the ability to appropriately and adequately raise, spend, and then operate and maintain uh, fairly significant uh, facilities, uh, sizable chunks of change that folks invest in us, and then the facilities that helps them, uh, uh, helps us prosecute our mission to Santa Rosa County as well as the other counties in the region. So I would appreciate you taking the time to read this. Uh, this isn't fiction. This is factually based, and it's intentionally so, so that folks that we come to ask for money from uh, get the history behind our organization. Uh, we're not fly-by-night. We've been doing this a while, and if you're going to invest in a regional nonprofit that could become a regional draw, I would submit to you that the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge should, should and could be your number one priority. I also have to say, I get it that it sets a precedence. It would also set quite a precedence as if my organization, whose idea it was not to partner with the Panhandle Butterfly House, but engaged in good faith for seven and a half months in an idea that I believe started here, wound its way through the county commissioners multiple times, if at the end of the day, We've done everything we were asked and then get no support from the very county that asked us to do it. To me, that's an awful precedence for your nonprofits, too. Um, since this is my first meeting, I just want to go on record. And my, my philosophy is always hand ups, not handouts. And, you know, I've been spoke at my first commission meeting on the Butterfly House. And, you know, as we're talking about precedents, um, I would hope the precedent we set is that the organizations that come to us, meaning the county, all of us, all our taxpayer dollars, and that's how I refer to them, um, can demonstrate that they can bring something to the party, if you will. You know, they need to be show us that they could sustain these operations. They need to show us that it will draw folks in the Santa Rosa County. Um, so that's the precedent I would hope 
this this board could set because that's the precedent I plan to carry through you know uh, with the BOCC is is we work with very limited taxpayer dollars is it's not just handouts and oh they'll be back next year or in two years and they can't prove it I mean there's a ton of 501 c3s and they all do great things for this county and and we'd love to help them all but the ones that come to us you know I hope the precedent set that shows they're asking for a hand up and they don't plan to come back year after year or every two to three years going up oh, well we we kind of over exaggerated this or we didn't plan this well so um, as we go forward and, and to look at all the folks coming I think this may give us an opportunity um, to set that precedent that you need to bring something you, you have to be out there trying to raise funds you have to be out there pursuing grants having fundraisers and and sh demonstrating that you can support it and it's going to be good for Santa Rosa County it's just kind of my philosophy hand ups not handouts so um, a watchful eye you know I have not read that particular document I've read your other documents I, I think the other documents were well done so um, like I said new guy to this I would like to f hopefully find some way to support this operation if we can't do it all then you know what can we do to help you um, is it all or nothing bill or is it no sir you know, never is in the nonprofit world that's for right sure. You're you know so there. just my thoughts I know we're sitting on a reserve I know there's a lot of requests down, coming down the pike I'm looking at Navarre Park I could tell this board um, as I said in my first BOCC meeting we are not going to spend seven million dollars on Navarre Park we are going to fix Navarre Park where it needs to be fixed and we're going to use whatever funds you know that were allocated for that for other things to spread that wealth so um, I'll be looking at Navarre Park hard I know a bill was put on this board for Navarre Park that was rather hefty <laughs> and all I could tell this board is that I'm, I'm looking at Navarre Park hard phase one is going to move forward we're going to leave space uh, where the butterfly house was going to go they're working alternate plans they're going to come back to us um, with proposals for that but uh, my goal is to you know help preserve those reserves but also there is some requests coming from the beach we're looking hard at the beach we're looking I mean we need to look all the way across because like I said as 87 opens up it opens up this whole county for what I think is a an awesome tourism thing so um, just kind of my philosophy and how I evaluate things as they come forward so if, if there's a way we can help an organization that shows they can help themselves then then I'm all for that so just kind of my philosophy I'll leave it up for the rest of the board for comments I'd like to hear you know everyone's comments on that so I think that we probably need to clarify something first because some of the TDC may be sitting here not knowing when you just made that comment about we were sent here by the Commission and you guys voted to fund this so are you guys wondering what he's talking about <laughs> possibly okay so thank you Julie I didn't want to be the one to okay uh, walk so that here's dog, what's frankly. happened that you may or may not know well over a year ago I don't know how long it's been now um, you guys voted to fund part of Navarre Park that included the butterfly house was in the part that you guys were going to fund right so when he said the last seven and a half months what what happened is the last several months the county went into talks with kind of between the butterfly house and and the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge to maybe partner together and then the county would give that money that we voted to fund on the county land in the park over it would go move be remo removed and we'd actually save some money by building the building on their property instead and then the butterfly house would operate over there with them okay right correct yes ma'am okay so and I don't you probably haven't heard about all those talks and maybe you have I don't know so so stop me if you've heard about them all no okay we need a so, refresher anyway. so it was a long process but it couldn't come to terms the the two entities I'm not pointing any fingers saying anybody's at fault at this point I'm just saying that it couldn't come to terms where this was going to be 
this was going to happen, where they were going to join forces at one location, being the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge. So it was made clear to the Board of County Commissioners at a meeting recently that was not going to happen. So that left the Emerald Coast Wildlife hanging because for months they had thought this was going to happen. And then the Butterfly House, you know, basically said, we're going to go seek our own way kind of deal. And maybe I don't know what it is yet. We'll find out. So that kind of put them in a bind. And so that's what he's referring to when he says this, because the county, the administration, we're, we were in talks with them. And I don't mean me. I mean the administration, board county commissioners. So that's where his frustration probably that you can sense is coming from that maybe you didn't know about. Okay, so I want to clarify that with everybody. So that money that he thought was coming that way was coming from your initial vote of that park plan phase one. So thank you. Back to the drawing board. <clears throat> Where we stand is a little over $1.5 million in TDC reserves right now. Um, They've been obviously a good partner, especially the last seven and a half months negotiating with the county. And it has held them up, that is true. Um, I understand that. Um, these are all great organizations, as Commissioner Peach pointed out. The Butterfly House is a good organization. You guys are. There's many of them in Santa Rosa County that we appreciate and we're glad that we can be a part of. This um, falls into the tourism thing. I don't know how much of a tourism attraction it's going to be to actually draw people right there but it is a tourism attraction I mean it does fall into that purse Florida statute as a fundable source that we're allowed to f spend our funds on um, per statute I've checked um, again you guys um, can discuss this if in I'm prepared to take your recommendation as well as make my own to the Board of County Commissioners um, per your, you know, once you guys have a decision made, we can fund them partially. I don't, you can fund them in, incomplete. That would be your decision. But you know where that leaves us with TDC reserves, okay? So I don't know that that would be my recommendation, personally, as the director. But you guys can obviously vote and make your own recommendation. May I yeah, make just, a, I, Liz, just to clarify hers a little more in Bill's. Mm -hmm. So when they were looking at that, partnering together, um, they were gonna give them a piece of the property and build a vivarium and have it built by March so that when the Butterfly House closed, there was a vivarium and they were gonna share the education center um, with the education center that uh, Panhandle Butterfly House was asking for. And I think that at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, the, it was like 570 some thousand to do yours and the vivarium and to bring the butterfly house there because the current estimate on the butterfly house in the park's a million dollars and, and that's, a, that's, that's a stretch. It's, it's, a, it's a big facility and they're working through their business plans now to try and figure out how they're going to sustain something like that. So that's kind of where it came from. It was moving along and then I think in July it started to come off the rails. I wasn't in the seat yet. I was watching from out there. Um, but that's kind of where the, the dollar figures and the explanation came from. May I make a couple clarifying points to, uh, to your point, Commissioner? On the all or none, uh, clearly it's not. The $471,558 is down, like you say, significantly significantly from the proposal we were bringing uh, to the county commissioners but that includes full build out of both buildings and all the habitats to get us moved and fully operational in Santa Rosa County to be yeah. operational and this is uh, I don't want to put too fine a point on this but I want to address your issue about all or none uh, to be operational in conduct business and get moved here in Santa Rosa County what we would need is to complete both buildings obviously we got to have our uh, medical center to rehabilitate the critters we got to have our education center to do all the great things educational uh, wise that we've been doing for the past 25 years and continue to expand on those so we do become a regional attraction and we have to build uh, a large flight cage so that we can uh, rehabilitate 
our large raptors without having to transport them currently to Alabama, which causes an undue amount of stress on these already stressed creatures. What we're talking here is some of our most endangered creatures, uh, bald eagles, osprey, all the species of owls, all the species of vultures, etc. So the amounts we haven't raised to complete that bill, if this helps you at all, to uh, address Commissioner Peach's uh, uh, comments about all or none, we need $354,808 to, to complete our building project without halt in construction and an additional $45,000 to complete the large flight cage. That would get us operational in Santa Rosa County. That totals $399,808. So that's not fully operational. It gets us operational in Santa Rosa County. It allows us to prosecute our mission here and uh, uh, grow the future. Commissioner, to your point, we aren't the folks that are going to come to you and, and have our hands out every two, three years. I. We have proven that from our fundraising. We will continue to prove that in the way we conduct our business. I think I've shown you the revenue streams that we expect. Those are realistic figures for our uh, Highway 87 location. So yes, I do consider this a one-time cost, absolutely. And I appreciate y'all's consideration and deliberation. This has been a long road for us. Bill, I have a question. Yes, how much, can you break it down, so how much is needed for the habitats how much is needed sure. for the research building and how sure. much is needed for the education building I surely can let me get to those and I don't know if we can pull the slides back up but that might help some okay so let me see if I can drive from here so uh, the 354,808 is the figure for the two uh, buildings together. The contractor estimates the Education and Visitor Outreach Center is going to be $205,662, of which the Impact 100 ladies funded $100,300, as I was sharing with you. So that's fundraising we've done. The Medical Rehabilitation Center, $395,245. And then I delineate there what we've already paid and additional monies we've raised on this slide. The habitats, uh, those were in backup slides. I'm not sure is that they made them here into this. So, let yeah, here we go. So this lists all the animal rehabilitation habitats we have to build, and that's. Uh, the residual on those that we haven't already funded or constructed ourselves is $116,750. So $117,000 is needed to complete the... All the habitats. The habitats that are necessary to relocate the animals here, and it is also necessary, correct me if I'm wrong, to have a medical building in order to relocate them here. Yes, Those are the two have-to-haves. No question about it. We the can't. education building is not a have-to-have in order to relocate the animals here and take care of them, correct? It is certainly not. What that is a have-to-have in our mind is for us to be fully operational and start generating the revenues that we expect our, so that we can become self-supporting uh, again. So if you can tell me exactly then again, so it would cost sure. how much for the flight yeah. or for the animal habitats and how much for the... Rehabilitation Center, please. The rehabilitation is $395,245. That was the original cost, right? I would, I don't have that. You caught me with a number I wasn't prepared for. And here I thought I had been prepared for any question you might have. So we would have to back up off uh, the percentage of the 118950 that is uh, we've already paid in construction costs. And then we would have to back off uh, $20,000 or so that has been donated to uh, the medical rehabilitation center that we've already raised. So, so minus 138,000 roughly. Uh, no, 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 no. Out of that 118,000, sorry, let me go back to the, can I just continue this thought here so I can show you where these habitat numbers are coming from. So this is all the habitats that we have to get built. 
both on the animal ambassador side, these are the creatures that are unreleasable that I was sharing you with that either the federal uh, agencies or state agencies allow us to use for educational purposes and we're permitted to do so, or the medical, excuse me, the real rehabilitation habitats. The $65,000 large aviation flight cage is the one I was referring to that Currently, we don't have that capability. We have to transport them to Alabama to finish their rehabilitation <laughs> prior to release. And that's extremely stressful on those critters. And unfortunately, uh, that stress shows in our mortality rates during transport. So now let me go back to the uh, construction cost slides. Come on. So of the 118.950 in costs we've already paid, uh, I can get you a breakdown on what of those have gone to reduce that $395,000 medical rehabilitation center price tag. So the total ask though today is $471,558. Yes, ma'am. And that's for two separate buildings and animal habitats. That's for that's out the door price, if you will, for us to be fully operational in Santa okay. Rosa County. So I'm just asking for the the two totals instead of that one education building. The medical building total and the habitats total for all the habitats. For rough math, we can go back and get you the detailed figures, but for rough math and the same percentage as the cost estimated by our contractors, we've been estimated the expenses of being two-thirds two -thirds to the rehabilitation center, one-third to the education center. So if we apply the, uh, that math to the 118,950 figure, two-thirds of that, I don't have my calculator with me and my math in public is extremely weak. So if you minus the 80,000 off of the 395, 245 total cost for the medical rehabilitation center, you know, you're talking roughly 315,000 still outstanding cost to finish uh, construction of that uh, facility. Well, I, have, I have a question that I wanted to present to the board. This is on record but it but it's just talking if we fund every building that people want to build we're going to be broke i'm asking if tdc dollars should be in advertising once things are built bringing them to these places that might be more respectful for what we do we're a tourist board once things are built and and there with fundraising with grants with things like that i just don't know that with every single because we're going to get the zoo's going to want to build something more i just don't know the fallout of this i'm just b trying to make you cautionary of some things that if we try as a board to build everything we're not going to be able to keep up but if we once things are in place if we can do advertising, if we can do anything to draw, which is our job, tourists to these places, is that better use of our money? Thank you. <laughs> My understanding of our mission, you know, I think that you know certainly places like this have got to have infrastructure to create what we're going to draw people to but we spent a lot of time discussing like our focus for next year and uh, and primarily on navarre beach and navarre area because that's where our money is generated you know for us to allocate for the most part and so i feel like too i'm concerned about giving a big part of our reserve money away 
um, even though I think it's very honorable and a very needed project, you know, and it's like just what I've read and seen in the paper, the articles, you know, it's definitely a heart project, you know, and, and I think it will be a huge asset to our area. But my concern too is just, you know, I feel like we've spent a lot of money over the past time that I've been on the board as far as marketing, and I think it's made a difference in terms of bringing people to this area. I think that will all certainly be an attraction too, but I just, I feel like we spent so much time on budget and, you know, how we can generate more money to help that I think we need to be cautious too about, I guess, spending lump sums like this. So that's just my thought. I want to clarify too, in case I misspoke earlier, when I said our reserve account. So what we have is 1.5 million in un allocated tourist development tax money and 750,000 in what's an actual TDC reserve. Same amount, I'm just, I just want to clarify that, the way I spoke it, yeah. yeah. 750,000, yeah. but um, I mean, right now, if we're tourist money, I mean, I work right on Navarre Beach and our job, I consider it, and part of being on the TDC is to get tourists to engage into our county. That's what county funds, that's what tourist dollars are for. This would not be for that because there's nothing there yet for them to go to. I think better spent our money is to get them to that because if we build everything for everybody that's gonna come to us from the precedents set here in a time when it's not budgetary, that we're gonna see the fallout of this. I definitely agree with it. I love it. I'm an animal lover of all kind. I, I will go to it. We at Resort Quest will send people to it. We will have rack cards for it. We will do on a, a company level what we need to do to support you. I just wanna be respectful of our money and that our tourist dollars is being used in the right way. So, if there's, is there any more discussion? Because we probably need to, to do something. So, yeah, I have a. a I question. would just like to make a the comment. Let's be very clear here. Uh, without help, and like I say, I feel like my uh, my organization has done everything the county has asked us to do for the past year, starting with an idea that came out of this council. I'm told by the commissioners, there will not be an attraction to bring people to Santa Rosa County without some help. We don't have the money to complete this project. It's just that simple. So I certainly understand your focus and your concerns about want to uh, spend your money on tourist attraction. If there isn't an attraction to draw tourists to, then we're kind of in a circular argument too. Isn't that our so, job? Ma'am? Is that not our job though? I mean, we, oh, we like, is. I mean, we would have many people come and want to do I mean it's not to say that we have to fund everybody to have something to do I'd like to have more restaurants I'd like to have a water park. I mean, there's lots of things I would like to do for tourists do we fund all of them or is our job as a board getting tourists that are here to come to those places rather than us build those places ma'am I'm not arguing I'm here in front of you on the direction of the county commissioners whose guidance my organization has been following and accepting for about I the past year it's as simple as that. I can understand that yeah do we have another I think I remember on the calendar is there another budgetary meeting scheduled like in February or something like that no. or was that just it's that in, may have been old. it's in May that we'll oh, be we'll time. be budgeting for next fiscal year that starts gotcha. next October 1 what is the requirements with the, the impact 100 grant you have to use I'm that not money. sure that I understand the question Julie. the I'm sorry the impact 100 grant that you received is there yeah. any requirements that go along with that it has to be uh, totally applied to the uh, construction of the visitor outreach center the Does, is there center. like a deadline that it uh, has to be spent by or they won't give it year, to you or it's a year time period I believe is that correct two years okay Lynn do you have any suggestions questions comments Anderson, I'm the executive director of the Emerald Press. And while we've talked 
Well, we've talked about money this morning. I think. Green. Okay. Well, we've talked an awful lot about money today. What we haven't, what I haven't heard us tell you, is, is what I think you're asking about. Where are these tours coming from? So, as an executive director, I need to tell you today what, where they're coming from. Our tours come from all five counties. So, they're, the local guys are they are they tours to you? Uh, if they're Escambia or Okaloosa, are they tours to you? Day tripper tourists, yes. Yeah, okay, they are. So we have five counties worth of folks, four if you don't count Santa Rosa County. But next week we have a, we have a class with Audubon. So Audubon's a national level group of people coming. And I reached out to our local hotels to ask how, how we could work with them in case we do have an out of town visitor. We have NOAA that comes up regularly. That's who our marine mammal science, our uh, stranding coordinator works with. I spoke with our NOAA coordinator yesterday and we hope to have them come up this year. They go over to Dauphin Island because that's the closest place that can support them. They can come here now. We have National Wildlife Rehabilitators Association symposiums that go every single year where hundreds of people come in and they'll come here to Santa Rosa County. Florida Fish and Wildlife Rehabilitators Conference was just held down in the Orlando, the general Orlando area. We strive to send our staff there because that's where they learn everything from. And Bill briefly mentioned that we're focusing on Title I education. That is a local education program, but it also covers all five counties. And when we take that a little bit further and we talk about our interns, our t interns come from all over the world. One of our graduated intern had, just came from, um, from a, um, a location in Africa. Our, our interns come from Utah, they come from North Carolina, they come from some of the bigger schools. So I think by the technical definition, they are a tourist, even if they're here for three months. They're kind of like our snowbirds. And we actively participate and recruit our snowbirds to come into the local area to help support our, our mission. So they, they're here on a regular basis. And instead of going to a restaurant right outside the refuge in Fort Walton Beach, they're going to be coming to a restaurant right here in Navarre. And I think what we're seeing, and I think what I haven't said to you yet is, I understand where our tourist money comes from, partially from bed taxes, because I, am a, I own a condo and I pay those bed taxes. And I'm really thankful that we saw that great increase in October. I saw it too. I think we're going to continue to see those things. And I think as part of this, this very general and very large eco tourism that we have been in, um, embracing in, in Santa Rosa County, I think we fit right in there. And I think we, this group and Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge, we're going to be partners for a long time. And it's going to be a lot more than just having um, uh, our cards in the, in the different rack locations. It's actually going to be a partnership. And I already consider that you have those partnerships out there with the other nonprofits and the other groups that bring folks into the local area. And I think what we're asking is for maybe a little bit more support than you have in the past. But this is a little bit more. It's actually a lot more than somebody has brought to Navarre in a while from an, from an eco-tourism, from a general tourism, and from an education perspective outside the norm, outside the um, Santa Rosa County School Districts. You all certainly have your challenges facing you. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, I can tell you, though, as you work through your deliberations and think into the future, uh, we're, not, we're not talking about the future or hypotheticals. Our need is real. It's right now. Uh, I've been communicating it to the uh, commissioners for coming up to a year now. Uh, I, would, I would ask some level of support so that we can get this across the finish line. And this isn't a hypothetical. This is facing us. We're pouring concrete. There's steel on site. And uh, I think we would, we collectively as a community, would be missing quite an opportunity if we couldn't find a way to bring the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge to Santa Rosa County. I really do appreciate y'all's time this morning. I have one minimal question yes, before we move forward. The $117,000 that we talked about yes, for, I think, was the unfunded habitat cost. Correct. That includes the 65000 for the raptor cages it does, as well? It does, ma'am. Okay. But really, the unfunded part of that large raptor cage is 45000 
Okay. We've had twenty thousand dollars in donations uh, to construction of that, including uh, thirteen thousand from uh, Congressman Gates' uh, mother, Vicky. So wonderful. So yeah, the construction to fund the habitats would total one hundred eighteen thousand some odd dollars, correct? For all the habitats, one sixteen seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, ma'am. How does the TDC feel about funding the ab the animal habitats? It's kind of where I was going with that. I just kind of felt like if we gave them at least that foot in the door. Um, I'm know. prepared to <clears throat> make that recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. I would second that. I, I can't make a motion. I would like to right. make the motion to yes. fund the habitat for what was it, 118? 117. 117. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I support that. And on your point, Liz, with infrastructure, I'm an infrastructure guy. Yeah. I think we're going to have to spend some on infrastructure out of the TDC because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to fund restaurants and things like that. But I think these 501c3s that are, you know, showing some self-sufficiency and showing some, some gumption to raise funds, my personal view is, you know, that's what we're here for, too, as well as just to market this mm -hmm. beautiful place we have. But we need to give that hand up to some of these organizations that are going to bring it in because they're not out there, you know, um, selling cheeseburgers and things to, to make a profit. They're out there trying to do good things. And like I said, the ones that show they can support themselves and raise funds from other things, uh, that falls right into at least, you know, Dave Peach's opinion of a hand up more than a handout so um i would second Lynn's I would, motion i would agree with that so we have a motion on the floor we have a second any well just before we close this um i just want to thank you guys for everything you do and it's a great organization it was i'm glad that you sent the supporting documents because it was good to get the history and everything so thank you sir wonderful thing. absolutely so, i appreciate and Liz, it and i want to i want to thank you i've seen the work you guys have put in You've really, really backed up and done your part, and I really appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. We've been busy. All right, so we have um, a recommendation and a second. So I would say, is all in favor for 117000 be given for this project? Say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Okay, I think that's it. 117000 we appreciate it. Folks, can't thank you enough for your support and your time this morning. We well, greatly look forward to working with you all moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Brenda. Odd. It's not. It's not. There, it's right green. There you go. I can hear me. Um, I'm Brenda Stokes, president of the Gulf Coast County Walk Society, and I would definitely like y'all to know that a county is defined by their cultural projects. They're defined by their culture. It's a billion-dollar industry in the state of Florida for nonprofits. What, what they bring to the community, what visitors, visitors who come here, it has been our 40 years experience that the visitors that come to this county come here to be entertained. And I think they come for more eco-educational projects. And our project has been in existence since 2001. It was born from professors, um, educators, professional potters, and art patrons and we were a, a group of over 40 people who helped bring the Gulf Coast Kilwalk project to fruition and and what we are is is just um, you know our our pottery arts are over 30,000 years old and the wood fire um, wood firing has been done by human beings for over 30,000 years back when woolly mammoths roamed the earth Liz <laughs> And, and they had communities, they had kilns, they had uh, generations who came together to make, make art. They not necessarily found pottery, but they made art. 
our goal is education to the public of, of these kind of things. We want to partner with the Wildlife Center, the Turtle Center, the Science Station. Um, we've done a lot of projects out on the beach already for the arts, working with autism, you know, the autism kids. And, and you know, the county is defined by infrastructure. The infrastructure hand up, hand up is what Dave's talking about. I think your tourism dollars are well spent on infrastructure projects, not fly by night, come up by the day projects, but, but well driven projects. We started purposely very slow because we frankly didn't know if anyone was going to support this or not. But potters in the Gulf Coast within a 12 hour radius were tired of having to travel outside of the state and to many other states to participate in these large cultural kilns where you know many potters get together and fire these 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 pots that are totally glazed by the trees that suck up all of these minerals it's it's a, a really cool art but so so we built this thing here we did it slow we wanted to see if anyone was even going to come so over the years the first year we had the most famous potter in the United States build the kiln he came the first year and fired it the second year we attracted the attention of the Japanese and they actually did a sister state project. They came here 2006, fired the second kiln. We were still a small organization. Maybe 150 people came out to the opening, and we didn't even advertise it much. The third year, we had other people. Then we started the Gulf Coast Clay Conference, and that brought even more. We just kept having the famous people come to our little Holly, Navarre area. And the only place that we can host these conferences was at the State College. They were nice enough to, to uh, let us have our events there. So that's gone very well. And, and our kiln openings have gone from maybe 100 people the first year, 150 people the second year, to over, I believe, when the Haas Center was out last year, they said maybe five to 600 people were there. Um, the, the brothers at the brewery let people park there. Our neighbors are now charging people to park in their yards and watching their cars for them. They park um, down on the end. We have golf carts that ride people back and forth. So the project has far exceeded what we thought it would. So this year, the Japanese fellow wants to come back. That's my update. And I thank you for supporting infrastructure projects. And I hope you all will continue to do that in, in, in the future. I know you've done it in the past. And I, I don't know if they've come back to ask for money. Um, you know, after you build the building, you've built it. It should be sustainable. I don't know why they would want to come back and ask for more money if the project is already built. So with that said, here's my update. January 7th, Mr. Shimizu arrives from Japan. He's a very famous potter. We're honored to have him. He also brings the Consulate General of Japan, who's going to be here January 11th to view his exhibit that will be at Pensacola State College and the brand new Charles Lamar Studios. It's a brand new gallery, largest in Northwest Florida on campus right next to the Switzer Center. So Mr. Shimizu arrives on the 7th. On the 10th, we're going to tour a 90-year-old pottery in Ocean Springs, which is Shearwater Pottery. Walter Anderson Museum and take him to the Hilliard House because it's customary to take them somewhere. This is the oldest working pottery on the coast. The 11th, the Consulate General arrives and tours the gallery where his exhibit will be. He'll be making pottery. He'll be making pots at Holly Hill Pottery. Um, the 9th, the 12th, the 13th. The 14th, they glaze the pottery, and these will be workshops from people who travel mostly like they were talking about the five, actually we're a five state area. We have people coming from Texas, um, South Florida, just the general region, Southeast region. And the kiln's loaded from the 17th to the 20th. It takes five to seven days. Mr. Shimizu's on his own schedule. He speaks no English. We have interpreters that are there sometimes and not. And the Japan Center funding was cut this year so the Gulf Coast Kiln Walk Society is paying the entire, footing the entire bill for Mr. Shimizu. But we've had a lot of great in-kind donations. So that's helping and, and the community stepped up to help us with a t-shirt. Okay, the kiln cools. 
January 30th, there's two tea ceremonies, one at the University of West Florida, and the other tea ceremony will be um, January 30th at Pensacola State College. The 31st is the opening reception for Masayoshi Shimizu at Pensacola State College. Beauty and Use, celebra celebrating Japanese cultural traditions, 6 to 8 p.m. And then, of course, the 14th annual Woodstoke Kiln and Pottery Festival. Mr. Shimizu will be opening that kiln at 9 a.m. on February 9th. It's a Saturday, and it, we just learned that it will be attended by International Fairs Wakayama Pre Pre Prefecture, which is a state, Florida State, Wakayama is a state, and it'll be attended by their international director who's coming to the opening. So we're really nervous about that. <laughs> but anyhow, these projects are, you know, the counties from our project has just grown beyond what, what we thought it would be. It's very well supported by the public. We are there for the education portion of this. Our family's owned a pottery for 40 years in Santa Rosa County. Uh, you know, we no longer do art shows because we're too old. And our whole business, you know, pottery's heavy and you, you know, you carry it around to the art shows and your back hurts and stuff. So, so we have a cottage industry in our yard behind the house. And, and that has exceeded expectations also. So there, there's a big, you know, when your county has a turtle center and your county has a wildlife center and your county has what's fixing to come to Navarre, which is the Discovery Center, and then you're covered by the arts, you're doing a good thing. And, and that should be invested in, not all the time. Infrastructure is the hand up that they need to take care of themselves. And after that, they're on their own. So, you know, except for sometimes projects. <laughs> but I thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that. Good update. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to add information under item two of the lodging tax update. Okay. Okay. Um, and the reason is because we didn't meet in December. And so I gave you an update as good I had at that point. But I did get a... Um, an email here recently just in the last few minutes with that shows the November's update so that I can mm -hmm. go ahead and get that recorded so in November we brought in a hundred and fifty five thousand three hundred twenty eight or three hundred twenty five dollars which was a twenty nine point fifty six percent increase so that's great to start out our our new fiscal year with a fifty one percent increase in October and a twenty nine percent increase in November it just really shows that those um, the decisions being made are paying off with you know some different mm -hmm. things that we've done in unison with the ad agency obviously they've been really responsive with coming up with some new things per my request that are working really well and we're going to be doing some exciting new things um, this spring with activations out of, in in market but away from here and um, just some different fun, exciting things, and they'll probably be here next month to tell you about that. But we've been working through them the last couple months. Good. Good job. Good update for that, too. November's a tough month. Yeah, so I was glad to see, yeah. I'm glad to see that 29% increase in November because mm -hmm. it is a tough month. November is, is a tough month. So I am glad to see that. Um, all right, is there, or I, I would like to say thank you to Commissioner Peach for being here. We, we welcome you to the board. Um, Commissioner Parker did a great job. Um, he will be missed. I enjoyed his input and his laughter um, and him being late every minute. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, I, I, he knows I'm teasing with him because I do that frequently. No, we're, we're, we, were, we were very lucky to have him on our team and we're lucky to have you on our team. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it, Madam Chairman. I'm thrilled uh, to be on this board. Um, I've been watching this board for a while, and the, and the good things it does and the great things we'll continue to do. Um, it's evident with the increases we're seeing. So, you know, more and better things and, and hand-ups to folks is, I think, what we're all about. One proposal is the new guy, if I might. Um, I kind of like the idea of having, you know, a meeting down here every once in a while. I would ask the board just to entertain. Maybe we look at and I know it's a stress on IT, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the possibility of, you know,
can we do more down alternate more um, I, I'll talk to the county administrator and things I know it's a burden on the IT and I appreciate it but I think it helps you know um, share the meeting location a little more than we do uh, other than Milton I'm gonna hold office hours down here just so folks in my district can um, well, now we're half and half so, so oh okay we are I mean, half. yeah we're, so we're six, six months, months here and six months there oh all in one row yeah. okay so is your thoughts commissioner to january be here february be there if, if that's possible i mean i don't March want to put be an here, extra burden back and forth on rotate that way yep. i'll have al uh in my office he does all the scheduling i'll have him check yeah it's if the board's day. amenable yeah. i know it's a it's it's a drive for you but you're doing it six either six months in a row or alternating so well, done, just to just it. to yeah. just to consider if if we don't want to that's fine but just i'll come back to thought. the board next month uh if al can check and see if that's possible with the meeting or you know any pre-scheduled meeting dates I get it because I, I know mean, you guys already have your schedule for 20 for yeah, this this I know year, you already set the schedule I mean but if that would help you know folks out here from driving you know too much in one way just a thought. I get I get I get it that's, and, and that's thank you reason. I am thrilled to be here with all of you and I appreciate all the work you've done in the past well, thank you I'm looking forward to learning from you and helping the board is there anything else that the public has as it says or any input anything that we need to discuss before we close the meeting no all right is there a recommendation that we adjourn all right then we're see you later <laughs>